Hello. Today we're going to talk about how I made this out of this. Welcome back to Future Fiber. This is a channel where I talk about mostly knitting at this point. So I got this knitting machine as a Christmas present and I've had some time to play around with it now. A lot of scarves, a lot of beanies, tubes, but I decided it was time for a little bit of an upgrade and therefore we tackled a cardigan with pockets. So the idea originally came from a YouTube video that I saw. Her channel, I will link it down below, but her channel is called Melissa's Crafts. This is a tutorial on how to knit a v-necked cardigan. I decided to take it and do a little bit of modification in terms of fit and construction. Um, and I tried to kind of document the process of how I made the sweater. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the schematics of this cardigan. So I drew up, you know, basically what this is going to look like. I drew up some panels. This is not the actual schematic that I used to work with. The actual thing looks a little bit more like this, but this is indecipherable for people who are not me. So I drew this again so that everyone can understand what I was trying to do here. So. For the main body, we have four panels. Two front panels where you have 38 stitches that I cast on. And then I cranked the machine until I had 57 rows. And then at 57 rows, I started decreasing on one side every other row by one stitch. I did that until I had 19 stitches left on the machine. You're going to be doing that twice, but on either side of the panels so that you end up with two mirrored panels um, so that you have that V shape. And for the back, you do a similar thing to the front, but you're going to end up with this sloped shoulder shape. So you're going to create two panels that are again mirrored. Once again, I cast the same number of stitches, 38 stitches, and then I went up 74 rows and then I started decreasing at a much ra more rapid rate than what I did in the front. I decreased by three stitches until I had 18 stitches. And I think that works out to be 86 rows. And of course the arms are just knit as tubes on the machine and I knit 90 rows. Honestly, don't trust my math on this because I don't, I don't know. I'm not a mathematician. Okay, I don't know if you can tell, but I this is at the point in which I will make a decrease. You can see that I've started to um, decrease from the stitch marker here every other row. So this is the stitch that I'm going to decrease into this stitch. And you can see that I cranked so that this um, needle comes up halfway. You can see that this is fully up and this is halfway up. Um, so the stitch, you can kind of remove off this needle and then place onto this needle. I think a loom pick, if you have access to one, will work better. But you see how I caught it over there. And I'm just going to kind of yank it off. And then we're going to attempt to put it on this needle like that. Okay, I pinned these out to dry. 
last night and now they're all dry and let me go over the pieces that I've knitted a little bit so these two here I'm going to join them here with I don't know some kind of stitch and they're gonna be the back panel I try to um, once I got to the top here I try to decrease three stitches at a time so that it makes this kind of like sloped shape and that's supposed to if you look at the piece like that it's supposed to simulate a uh, short row so if I was knitting from the top to bottom I guess I would just like knit back and forth in short rows so that the shoulder has a slant and that is because if we look at a front piece uh, should we go over here yeah so this is one of the front pieces and you can see that this is the v-neck neckline but and this is the shoulder seam i really should have used a contrasting yarn for this you can't really tell where the anyways this is just a straight line for the top of the shoulder on the front piece so by having the short row or what is this the decreased slope here it's gonna give a more of a uh, natural shape and a raised um, back of the neck I guess or that's my intention I don't actually know how this is gonna turn out so I think the order of operation here is knit this or sew this together sew the front panels to the back panel um, at the shoulders and then I'll attach the sleeves and then I will sew down the sides of the sweater or the cardigan and then I'll do the button band All right, my dudes, let me see if I can explain this in a concise manner. Okay, so now I'm seaming the, the shoulders of this cardigan, and I've already done it here. Um, so this is the front, and this is the back, and this is the seam. Okay, so I, what I did was for the back panel, here I picked up stitches the same amount of stitches as the stitches on the front panel the top of the front panel and then I put them together like so and then I do well with a crochet hook I do kind of like a three needle bind off I don't know if this is like the correct way to do it. I think you could just do a slip stitch and seam it all together, but I did a kind of a dumb thing where I don't really think the, the shoulders have the same amount of stitches, so it was kind of hard for me to tell. <laughs> it was kind of hard for me to um, just pick it up with the crochet hook as I went along. I don't know, I'm not really good at crochet either, so this this is just an easier option for me because I know exactly how many stitches need to be like sewn together or knitted together, so to speak. Um, yeah, this is kind of tight, so, but I'm not gonna redo it. It is what it is. For this side, I'm going to try and have my tension be a little bit looser so that the shoulder doesn't kind of pull as much i think it'll be fine okay this is where we are currently sleeves attached shoulders oh my god got my finger in there shoulders shoulders oh can you even see that i don't know anyway all right couple problems sleeve <laughs> hole very small like i'm wearing a big t-shirt i guess 
yeah like loose t-shirt but it's not oversized enough to um the armholes arm side is not um, tall enough for a t-shirt which you know might not be a problem depending on what i wear but yeah okay so that's the first one second problem this uh, shoulder is too short if you get what i mean like the neckline is too big um i think the back of the cardigan this from here to here is like maybe 30 stitches or something like that i feel like that's way too big so i might just seam up a little bit more here So something that I do want to talk about is this machine being marketed as not a toy. There's a Barbie machine that is basically this that dates from like the 80s and it was marketed to children. But I, I think they're doing the right thing by marketing it as not a toy because the learning curve is a little bit steep. I also do wish that they would change the color of this machine from the baloney pink because kids probably hated learning on this because like the instructions that come out of the box are totally useless and you have to watch youtube tutorials so i can't imagine how people figure this shit out before there was youtube like what did you guys do and i've heard this being you know kind of marketed as or being referred to people as a beanie machine and i do think that's true to a point because if you don't know anything about knitting or crocheting, I think the quality and the variation of the garments that you're able to make with this will be limited. So the quality of the garment that you can make with this will increase like exponentially if you already know yarn-based craft. And I think that's pretty self-explanatory and it makes sense, right? If you understand also a little bit about garment construction, it'll make uh the final result a lot more finished looking for example if you know nothing about how a cardigan or like a jacket or a shirt is made if you don't understand that for a shoulder um and the back of the neck to be higher than the front of the body and why that makes sense sitting on like a human shoulder i guess then you are limited to kind of, you know, making rectangles and then seaming them together. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like a lot of commercial, like H&M is probably selling you loads of those things. Um, but if you do have an interest in um, garment construction, I think there's a lot of more interesting things you can do with this. I mean, it, and it kind of opens up doors for uh, making things to bigger sizes, more accessible sizes, because I think a lot of the tutorials that you see on TikTok or on YouTube and things like that, they do tend to lean a little bit on the um, smaller side, um, because if you're working with just 48 pegs, you at a certain point, even if you're a petite person, if you want any sort of oversized look with this, you're going to have to make multiple panels. It's like even for the front, if you want it to be way more oversized than this, like some commercial garments are, then you're going to have to make the front in two pieces or three or four pieces because it'll be like front, 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 front this way. And you're going to have to learn how to match a stitch if you want an invisible seam. Same with the back, like this back was made in two pieces. I've seen some tutorials where they make it with one. But then for me to get this kind of like shoulder shaping, I had to make it in two pieces. Um, and then the final result ended up being like 70 something stitches across, which you can't get with the 48 pin machine. So here are some things that I learned. 
while working on this project. I think the first thing is about what kind of yarns work the best. I think anything with like very smooth fibers work really well, but also with yarn weight is also important. I think the most ideal yarn weight is worsted weight yarn. This sweater was knit with, I believe this is Aran, and I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little bit, the gauge is a little bit more loose than I would like. I've knit a whole sweater with this yarn already, and the gauge on that, I think I used four millimeter or 4.5 millimeter, and this is definitely looser than that. So I would say if you want to have a more of a tighter, like hand knit looking gauge, you definitely want to go with worsted weight yarn. This is the same as just regular knitting, but please check your gauge before you start working on your garment. I think one of the things that's really hard is measuring how big your garment is actually going to turn out after you've taken it off the machine because the machine kind of stretches out the peg the pegs are kind of wide apart so they stretch out your your knitting and it will shrink and also ha potentially get longer depending on how you block it so i think it's really important to maybe not even go toward to like wet blocking. I don't think you really need to do that, but definitely knit a test swatch, measure your gauge so that you can use that to measure out your rows and your stitch count. And so that goes into the next thing that I was going to talk about. Make sure to count your rows. If you're cranking the machine, you kind of get into the zone and you start like not counting your rows. Um, or maybe that's just me. But please count your rows because the machine isn't going to do it for you if you're knitting in panel mode. And then you're going to have a hard time when you're trying to match up your pieces. I, this is speaking from experience because I had to undo some of the rows while I was seaming up my pieces. Especially the back because the back had to fit like exactly into each other. Make sure to count as you go. Related to waste yarn, if you're going to use the waste yarn method, which I do suggest because it gives you a nicer finished edge at the end of the project. Don't do too many waste yarn rows. I was so scared of the yarns coming apart so I did like 10 rows of waste yarn and first of all it uses a lot of yarn so there's that and then second of all you need to undo all of that yarn row and if your waste yarn is at the top of the knitting then it's much easier because you can just and unravel but if you're doing it from the bottom of your knitting it's going to be a little bit more annoying because around the edges you have to pull the yarn off of the last uh stitch it's a pain in the ass basically so don't do that like four five rows is enough i ended up cutting some of the waste yarn off because i was just so tired of undoing it but that's obviously not as sustainable in the long term because I do like to reuse my waist yarns. The thing is I would definitely block pieces before you seam them. It makes it a lot easier to see because the edges of stockinette obviously curls. So if you're even if you're doing a crochet seam instead of mattress stitch or whatever, it's just going to be so much easier if you um, block it flat and then seam it together. Um, okay, and then we're going to get into some pros and cons. I want to do the pros at the end because I am a sensitive person and I like sandwiching <laughs> my um, criticisms and also leaving the conversation off on a positive note. So we're going to start with the cons. The cons, I've already kind of touched on all of these points, but to list them, you're very limited in gauge and fiber types. You do need to work with smoother fibers, otherwise it's going, you're going to have a rough time <laughs> with the machine trying to crank it. Something like very clingy, like wool that's very wooly, I think you'll have a much harder time using that on this machine than something like the yarn options that I mentioned earlier in the video. If you drop stitches, which will happen if you're a beginner with this machine, you will hate yourself. And at multiple points in this construction i wanted to just throw the machine out the window and just knit it by hand i think knitting by hand is way easier than you trying to pick up a drop stitch the way that it knits basically you have to pick up your drop stitches in a purl direction and that's really hard if 
your stitches are on the pegs so what i did usually was just if i had a drop stitch i would just start all over again because it was just so much easier um, but there are some tutorials on how to pick up stitches and they do recommend that you have a loom pick which is kind of shaped like a dentist tool which makes it much easier for you to pick up and like maneuver fine stitches i tried to do it with the crochet hook i don't recommend it to start over <laughs> the other con seeming sucks seeming really sucks i purposely have a preference towards seamless um, top-down sweaters if I'm knitting by hand and I don't seam for a reason because and that is because I hate seaming <laughs> and there was so many loose ends to weave in at the end of this project that I just felt like I was in purgatory um, I was like Sisyphus pushing rock up a hill um, just like endless, endless yarn to weave through this garment. It was, it was awful. Going back to if you want to create garments that are not just tubes, basically, and if you're plus size and you want more panels, or if you just want a bigger garment, it's gonna suck because you're, because you're gonna have more seams. And it's just, I mean, some people find it therapeutic, but for me, that was a con because I, I wanted to throw myself off of a cliff. Um, and then another con is decreasing and manipulating stitches really fiddly. I personally think that doing decreases by hand knitting, if you're just using two needles, is so much easier than you're trying to man manipulate this on a machine. You do have to take the stitch off the pick and then move it or off the needle and then move it to another needle. And that process is just very fiddly. <laughs> You have to have your yarn a certain specific way and it was just like not my favorite thing. Let's get into the pros. Definitely, definitely faster than hand knitting. Especially if you have a drill because you you can just go Psh! and it's definitely good for creating if you wanted a worsted weight stockinette garment. This is it. <laughs> definitely faster i made this in under a week and i think that's pretty good for a cardigan this size and i think it would have gone way faster if i knew what i was doing i didn't really know what i was doing in the beginning so that ate up some time as well and then this is a big 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 pro for me is it's really less strenuous strenuous it's less strenuous on your hands but you do have to have good posture when you're doing this definitely put this on a table and then have it in front of you and sit on a comfortable chair and crank uh, with your like elbows in a good position basically so you don't throw out your shoulders. And I think it's going to be a really good alternative to hand traditional hand knitting for people who have you know chronic illness or disabilities that do want to knit but then have been maybe like it's very strenuous on their hands and things like that for them on their bodies so I think it's a good alternative for that stuff even for me like I've been knitting a lot in this past like couple of months and I found that my hands were getting kind of tired so but then if I still wanted to make something I switched to the machine and then just cranked out a scarf snake basically um, and so you still have something that you can you know do even if you're feeling particularly tired with your hands. And I think it's going to be even better if you do have the drill attachment so that you are just, you know, pressing the trigger on the drill um, versus like actually hand cranking it. So I definitely see the merit of that. And it's just fun. <laughs> it's not, it's a different kind of fun from hand knitting. Um, hand knitting you're very meticulous and like intentional with every stitch that you do but this is like so mindless you can do this while watching tv you don't really have to pay attention greatly to what you're doing um if you're especially if you're just knitting a tube and there's a whole community of people who are creating stuff for this machine because this has been around as i said for longer than we realize this just hit off on the tiktok and youtube in the recent couple of months but you, there's YouTube videos and tutorials like dating back like multiple years. There's blog posts, there's 
you know, as I said, there was a Barbie version of this machine in the 80s. So there were people making stuff with this uh, for a long time. Um, there's a lot of people on Etsy selling 3D printed parts. There's a lot of patterns that you can get, um, both as a form of a YouTube tutorial, but as just like written patterns as well. Yeah, there's just a lot of videos for this. A lot of material that you can learn from. Um, and I'll try and link down some of the channels that I watched in the description box below to get you kind of started and thinking about some of the different um, different projects that you can make with this. But you're not just limited to beanies and snakes. <laughs> you can do other things um, if you put your mind to it and if you're interested in that. And then I think this is a really good gateway machine to kind of start getting into like hand knit or machine knitting and understanding concepts of like flat knitting um, on a machine, things like that, to maybe you want to try and get yourself a other knitting machines that are available on the market right now. If you want to keep knitting in a circular way, you can go for the circular sock machine, which um, there's definitely like antique versions that are really, really cool that you can get on eBay and the secondhand sites. There's also a 3D printed version that um, you can buy for n not as much money as the antique versions, but they are kind of like, they work in the same way and you can do a lot of cool things with it. Um, Engineering Knits here on YouTube also did a whole series of YouTube videos on her using the sock machine and her experience with them. Um, and I think that's really cool. And then if you want to go into more of the garment knitting route, you do have the flatbed um, knitting machines that I've seen a lot of people use. Like the, there are a couple brands that still make them and then you can also get them secondhand. Those are definitely larger investments. Like a central machine will set you back about like 50 USD, but a flatbed machine or a circular sock machine is going to be a couple hundred, a couple hundred dollars, if not thousands. So this is like a good gateway knitting machine, I guess, if you decide that you want to do more of this stuff. I think that's it. Like, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I didn't expect myself to get such like so much use out of this thing, actually. Um, I thought I was just going to make a couple of beanies and like a couple of scarves. I had some projects in mind for that. And I, that, that was like, that's, that's it. That's all I'm gonna do. But um, as always, you know, YouTube whole led me down towards many wonderful projects that I could be attempting. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I will try and, and answer them in the comments or make another video if there's enough of them. And uh, yeah, that's it. I hope you have a wonderful day and see you later.